Funny Robin with Oxy Dry. And uh, I'm in my garage again. And it's a beautiful day. The sun is shining. It's a Saturday. I have the weekend off. Things are starting to get green and uh, flowers are starting to poke their heads up. And <laughs> I'm sure the weeds are quite eager to get going too, of course. But anyway. Uh, today I'm in the garage and I thought we would take a really good look at this machine right here. I know that a lot of you guys are uh, curious to see what, exactly how this machine is, uh, how this machine uh, works and everything. Um, and of course this will be the ultimate U.S. products manufactured, the ultimate model PB, PB3 which I acquired just a couple weeks ago, a week or so ago from a retired carpet cleaner. And um, there are some very interesting um, things about this machine, which I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna open it up and we're gonna take a look and I'll show you some things I've uh, found out about it. Um, but anyway, let's just go over it. Um, so there's a nice handle right here for picking it up and it's not that heavy. I think it's probably 50 pounds maybe or something like that. It's not that heavy. Nice solid handle. It's a very, I'm very impressed with the, the, um, the quality of this, this machine. And look at this, of course, is stainless steel, actually, which is impressive. And the plastic, um, I don't know what kind of plastic this is, but it really does seem to be um, pretty high quality. Um, I'll open up the, the tank again. There's these little uh, latches here that We'll keep it um, from popping off if you're rolling it around or whatever. Um, even the gasket is uh, seems to be really good quality. Everything is just uh, just seems to be good quality. This reminds me of that bowling ball plastic. I think they talk about. Um, um, I don't don't know what kind of plastic it is, but it doesn't seem to be the normal um, stuff. Uh, this is actually the, re the recovery tank, so when you when it fills up, you can just pull that out and dump it. And there's the intake for the vacuum motor, and there's a there's a screen there. And the t the the um the tank only goes in one way, and the handle drops down there. And it has a float in here, although I'm not quite sure how this exactly how this would work, um, because. It doesn't shut anything off, so that's a bit, a bit weird. But anyway, there it is. Um, so we'll put that back, and uh, the latches. I say that you just turn these. The machine's in really good shape, actually. Um, it has a an hour meter on here, and I see. 73107 so uh pretty gone 731 hours it seems like a lot but anyway um and uh, let's take a look in the tank which is uh, the solution tank stainless steel and we do have a screen there's a f screen there for the that's the intake now this device here is actually a sensor um, that if you put solvent in this tank, because this machine will clean with solvent, we'll, I'll get to that in a minute, I'll show something interesting about the pump and the innards. <laughs> and then this little port right there is actually a recirculating port. Um, so that intakes here, and then when you turn on the pump, it'll actually be continuously recirculating. It doesn't go through the heater when it's doing that, it just goes through the pump. And I'll show you that when I open it up. Okay, over here we have, uh, this is the the temperature control. And when you're cleaning with solvent, you would have it down here, which keeps it at 125 degrees. It doesn't go beyond that. But you can turn this and it goes up to 200 degrees when you're cleaning with water. This is has a 200 degree heater, which is pretty cool. Uh, we have the vacuum right there. This is the uh, pump and this is the heater. And let me see, I'll, I'm going to turn it on and we'll see if 
I think this lights up. Oh no, it only lights up when the, uh, there we go. Water only, no solvent. So this is letting you know that there's no solvent in the, uh, in the uh, tank here, which is handy. So you can see the red, the light is red, the heater is on. I've actually got it, oh, there it's off. Off, right there. Turn that off. Okay, so you can control the, there's a switch right there as well as right here. Hmm, okay, interesting. I'm just learning. <laughs> so um, one thing I just wanna show you is, now I'm gonna turn on the, um, the vacuum motor. So we can just hear what it sounds like, because I haven't really done anything with the vacuum motor yet, of course. So, <clears throat> but I'll show you. Um, um, I'm gonna open this up so we can hear it better. There we go. We're gonna listen to the motor here, see if we can detect any problems. <laughs> Now, when you're listening to a motor, what you want to do is you turn it on, let it run for a little bit there, and then you listen to it when it winds down. And that's where you can tell whether or not it needs bearings. And I'm thinking I'm hearing a bit of noise, a bit of a raspy sound, but we're going to do it again. Now, this time I'm going to, I'm going to put the motor on, under load. <laughs> Actually sounds pretty good. Okay, that's encouraging. I will still be taking a look at the motor from underneath. Um, I can see the motor. You'll, you'll see it in a minute when I open it up here. I actually opened it up the other day, so I kind of an, I have an idea what I'm looking at. But I figured that I'd uh, run through the opening of it here so you guys can see that. Okay, so let's turn on the pump. Now this pump is interesting. So... You can see the bypass, there's a little bit of water coming out of there. So when I first turned that on and I was um, heard the sound the pump was making, I was a little bit concerned because <laughs> uh, you don't really expect to uh, hear a pump making noise. We're used to demand pumps that will run until they build up pressure and then they shut off and have a... You know, they uh, only run on demand and then they don't actually make that much noise. But this is a different type of a pump and um, it actually runs all the time. And um, I did find a video on YouTube where somebody was running one of these machines and I, when they turned on the pump, they, I noticed right away I could hear the, the pump making quite a whining noise. So I'm assuming that's a normal sound at the moment, but uh, I hope so. <laughs> Because the pump is, uh, uh, U.S. Products sells the pump for uh, about a thousand dollars, and uh, I just wanted to show you before I go over that there's the um, there's where the um, the, the uh, pressure line connects onto the onto the machine. Okay, so we turn it over, and we see this is my. Uh, uh, in my way right now move this thing over a bit so this is the uh, the pump and um, it's um, it's a um, uh, what do we call that an impeller pump so the motor here which is kind of like a like a, a motor for like a Similar to the motors that you'd have in a, in a uh, oh, power head for vacuum. Similar idea. And I you can see inside of here, uh, maybe we can show you that, that um, I can see the, uh, the carbons 
I can see the arcing there. So let's see if I can get that to work. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you can see that. Here, just inside there, you can see the arcing, and it looks good. And of course, so the motor is spinning the impeller right here. Um, so, now if you've noticed, there is a, this is what concerns me, is there has definitely been some leakage here, and it does appear to be coming from over here, and uh, one of the things that I noticed right away is, I don't see any indication there's a gasket here, so, um, I was thinking about that, and I figured, well, maybe that's because there's a, maybe there's an O-ring inside, in here, in, in a groove or something like that. And I was able to find a um, parts diagram for this pump assembly. And uh, lo and behold, in the parts diagram, it does not show a gasket here. Now that had me a bit puzzled and I was thinking about it and I realized, well, maybe that's because there actually isn't a gasket. Maybe what they've done is because this thing is intended to be used with solvent, they didn't use a gasket um, because the solvent would break down any kind of gasket that you might put here. And I did notice that in the picture that I saw, it does look like there's a, like a, um, like a, like a groove in a circle around here with a ridge on the other side. So I think what happens is that when you tighten up all these screws, which are here, it, it puts the two pieces together and it acts like a, like a compression fitting. So there's no actual gasket, but that the, the brass, which is, this is brass, which is pretty soft, would then compress together like a, like a, well, compression fitting, which is what they're using on all these con connections over here. Now, if you look over here, um, you can see that the tubing they're using is not rubberized. This is the, uh, that hard plastic um, tubing. And uh, so what you're looking at here is now, uh, the, this is the intake, so it goes in here, and the uh, impeller is spinning, and, but what's interesting is this is where the, uh, the bypass goes up and into the back end of the tank. And then right over here, this other tube going that away, that's the, where it goes into the heater, which I'll, and then it goes out, and I'll show you that in a sec. And over here is the, uh, this is the solvent sensor device. I don't really know how that works, but that's pretty cool. So, um, now what's interesting though, is that although the pump is bypassing, it doesn't appear there's any kind of a valve, exactly, um, like you might expect, but rather, I susp suspect that what it, the way it works is this is actually a 50 PSI pump, probably produces more than that perhaps maybe 60 psi but it's um with the uh, f the uh fittings they have on here there's always a little bit of pressure that will bleed off and back into the tank or in which translates into a certain volume of water so they've calibrated it probably with different size orifices on the uh on the uh, body of the impeller so that uh, some of the, uh, I guess you could say, excess pressure and volume will go back up into the tank so that there's always water flowing through the impeller. Um, and then when you pull the trigger on the uh, tool you're using, uh, then the uh, 50 PSI then goes through and um, out onto your fabric. So that's pretty interesting and I think kind of ingenious, actually. <laughs> Anyway, let's uh, let's open it up. Now, when I opened it up the other day, I uh, discovered that uh, it seems that somebody has opened this up before because I'm missing 
There's two screws actually missing here. And uh, it comes apart rather easily, actually. Okay, and two more to go. Maybe I'll try to find a couple of more of these. It's not that they're really critical or anything there. They're not, um, they just hold on this bottom piece here, so. And then the whole thing comes off, as you'll see. So, that's it comes off it's got it's got um, cooling vents here um, intakes I guess and uh, uh, more here on this side and uh, more over here so there's lots of air will move through here which is great and it has a cooling fan here, which is actually running now because I, of course, I have it plugged in. So, now let's have a look. So, what do we see? Well, let's go to the motor. Vacuum motor is right here, obviously. And it looks like it's in really good shape. There's no, there's not even any dust building up, built up in here. Um, and it's a tangible discharge. It looks like a two-stage. And uh, the exhaust has got a nice... Uh, really good quality hose on here which goes right over to here and out to the side and when you're using solvent with this machine the idea is that you would put an exhaust hose on here and then vent it out into another room or out a window that's wise isn't it <laughs> so that's pretty cool now you can see way up on the top there, I don't know if you can see that, I'll put the light on. Here, I got a flashlight here. Um, up there is the, the control panel. There's the hour meter. Can you see that? Up there, there's a... Okay, interesting. I'm really impressed with the way this machine is put together. This is definitely a quality machine oh interesting there's a some kind of a, a, a sensor or something which it appears is going into the side of the tank the uh, recovery tank it is hmm. well there is something down there huh I'm not sure what that does. That's interesting. Maybe that senses that it's full. That's weird. But I can see there's a, you can see there's a, a some kind of a sensor there. I can see a number on it and there's wires going into it. So I'll have to figure that one out. Anyway, so the motor looks like it's in really good shape. Um, I will have to, I will check the carbons. I will, I'll have to, pop the cap to do that and over here oh look there's a solid state uh, panel here the relays in there and I guess that's where the sensor is uh, that controls the uh, shutting it off the heater off when the uh, when there's solvent in there and I would guess there's the control relay for the temperature for the uh, heat exchanger or the heater which is right here technically not a heat exchanger I guess but take a look at this I mean this thing is cast aluminum and there's uh well there's a interesting there's two three there's a ground wire I'm not sure what this one is this is probably oh that'll be the temperature that'll be the temperature control 
right there. That'll, and then we've got these two wires. We got a one of them is going to be the common, and then there's the hot. The that'll be the hot one. Okay, so that's how that works. So the pump. Let's go back up to the pump where I said that the the pump comes out of up here, right over in there. Okay, so the pump now pumps the water into the heater and then out of the heater and there's the takeoff where you would on the other side of this is where the connection is for the um, pressure line and again here's the, the cooling fan so this is a uh, actually the, this draws air in oh that's interesting so it's drawing air in and then blowing it through and out the uh, the ports here hmm. so very interesting very interesting machine but um i do have to open this up i do want to find out why it's leaking and hopefully i can just maybe clean it up they get rid of the the uh the mineral deposits from the water or whatever maybe i can uh fix that and i won't have to replace anything because i do not want to replace the pump although i believe that i can actually buy this piece i saw this on the US products website so if need be I can replace this it's I think it's a couple hundred dollars but I'm really impressed with this machine my only I do want to give it a try for sure my only um, concern with it would be how often will I be needing to dump it and fill it when I'm doing you know a decent size uh, upholstery cleaning job so um, other than that, it, it is a 50 psi. Yes, that's not a very, very minute much psi, but um, it has a 200 degree heater. Um, I'm I'm really curious to give it a try. Compare it to my new E600, which I've used a few times now, and I'm really impressed with how that works. But um, this would definitely not be be uh, able to. I wouldn't be able to use the um, Sapphire tool with this machine because. The Sapphire tool actually uses quite a bit of volume of water, whereas what I would use with this one I expect will be the PMF uh, dripless tool. I think that'll work just perfect for this. So anyway, I thought you all might want to see how these machines are put together. Um, I was really fascinated when I was thinking about buying it from the guy. I kind of debated, should I or shouldn't I? I mean, I might not ever use it, but I figured, well, what the heck. I'm, I'm curious. I like to... Um, understand how these things work so um, I'll keep you updated um, hopefully I'll be able to um, discover what's going on in here and be able to fix that it's a, it's a little bit crampy getting in there oh no one, one interesting thing is that this this pump motor by the way is actually riveted in place which is <laughs> now that's interesting you have to although I gotta sus I suspect if I'm looking at this, oh, that's brilliant. Oh my goodness me, okay. It actually isn't riveted in place. Ha, huh, that's, that's amazing. Okay, this bracket right here is riveted in place, but the motor is actually sitting on like a mount and it just, it slides in there. Oh, that is just, that's, oh, that's smart thinking. So, uh, hmm. Wow, I like that. So all you have to do is undo these fittings and this thing would just, would literally just slide forward and out. Oh, clever people. I like that. So it's sort of held in there, probably with a little bit of tension on the, on this. Let me see if I can actually maybe move it. Oh yeah, I moved it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> okay, that is so cool. I'm impressed. Very well done. Look at the look at the all the wiring is uh, you know put together and there's quick connects like right here and and uh, it's a uh, strapped and uh, you know the uh, cable ties. Um, just such a nice setup. I mean, really look at that. Eh? And the, oh, this is uh, there's a, a some there's a relay here. Oh, actually, there's a circuit board right behind me. Uh, right, 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 where my finger is. There's a circuit board right there. Hmm. This thing's got lots of circuits. And I guess that's why the, the fan is blowing right here under these circuits, all these circuits in here, so nothing overheats. Hmm. 
Hope the circuit board never breaks, because I bet that's not cheap. Well, I'm impressed. That's all I can say. All right, I thought you guys all might want to see that. And uh, tell me what you think, and what is it, if you've had any experience with these machines, any tips and ideas. I know that some people, I've I read were on some comments, people say that they take these pumps off and they put higher PSI pumps in here. And um, I'm, I'm going to avoid doing that if I can. I, I would really rather leave it working the way it is. Um, I have got, made an inquiry to my local supplier about getting solvent. And apparently they can get it. I just have to get a price for it. Because uh, I think that there will be probably be some cases where I will want to uh, and need to use uh, solvent to clean certain fabrics. Because I do get into some very fancy places with some very high-end furniture. And having the ability to use um, a solvent to clean, um, that really opens up some interesting doors. So we'll... Uh, I'll keep you posted on that because I think that's pretty interesting. So anyway, I uh, hope you have a good day and I hope that was interesting for you all. And and let's, uh, let's all learn about this thing together. Lots of, lots of fun, eh? All right, have a good day.